Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I've got my second last installment of the 2021 in review as we are going to talk about the top 15 EPs of the year. An EP, for those of you that doesn't, don't know, is an extended play. It's a short form kind of album that's normally about three to eight songs long, depending on who writes it and whatever. I don't include two song EPs. I think those are just double-sided singles, but that's besides the point. Uh, so we're going to jump into this pretty quick. I'm just going to explain how this video is going to go. I am going to list off every EP I actually listened and reviewed to in 2021 right off the bat. I'm going to have right above the kind of area. It's going to be an order too, in sequential order of what the score I gave, just so you can give a kind of context of what score I've given um, all of these albums. So that'll be a scrolling text on the side as I read through from uh, 74. I re reviewed 74 EPs. So from 74 to 15, I'm just going to name them off and say maybe a quick thing about each thing. So uh, that's gonna take a long time. So let's just get into it. Here are the uh, my full list up until 15 of my EPs of the year. 74 is Odd Profits Oracle EP, 73 Alan Walker, Walker Racing League, 72 Dirty Audios Take Control, 71 is Vancouver Sleep Clinics From A Distant Dream, uh, 70 Leo Tricks Out of Order, 69 Ghastly The OG, 68 Getter Some Creatures, 67 Ace Aura's Gem World, sadly didn't like it that much, 66 Leo Tricks Round 4, 65 is Company Untouchables, or uh, un Companies Untouchable. 64 is Matroda, Jack the House. Uh, 63, Elohim, Journey to the Center of Myself, Volume 1. 62 is Kirby's The Pattern. Uh, 61, Virtual Riot, Head to Head. I think it's Virtual Riot and Barely Alive. Uh, 60, Effin Distress. Uh, 59, Infected Mushrooms, Shroomies. Uh, 58, Lewis the Child's Euphoria. 57, Terry Zong After Hours. 56, Leo Tricks Vision of Visions of the Leo. 55, also Leo Tricks Special Guest. 54, Drinks on Me uh, Teetotal. Uh, 53, Big Gigantic Leisure Sessions, Volume 1. 52, Nanobi Euro Rave Power. 50, Draper Moments. 49, Banati uh, Choir of Angels. 48, Ramesses B Passion. 47, Sullivan King to the Grave. 46, Pixel Terror Artillery, 45, Drove Dusk, 44, Two Lanes is Reflection EP, 43 is Sharks Water Elemental that actually won the Bowtie of War for EP, or a Bowtie Award for EP of the Year, uh, 42, Flaws the Mind's Eye, 41, Tales Photos of the Sun, 40, Pendulums Elemental, uh, 39, Fool Troublemaker, 38, Elio, Can You Hear Me Now? 37, Mazer's Paracosm. 36, Zess is Anchored. 35, Rack, it's you. Uh, 34, Oblivion Dream Theory. 33, Disclosure, Never Enough. 32, Eliminate Belly of the Beast. 31, Caden, uh, Elevate. 30, Pixel Terror's Empire. 29, K Trinata, Intimidated. 28, Cone Sounds, Kronos. 27, Ray Volp's Mixed Feelings. 26, Starseed, Inner Space. 25, Burial and Blackstown's Shock Power of Love. 24, Troy Boy's Vibes, Volume 4. 23 is Jeremy Zucker and Chelsea Cutler, Brent 2. 22, Approaching Black's The Reason. 21, Reaper Militia. 20, K Flay's Outside Voices. 19, Barely Live Computer Love. 18, Cranked At Sad Robot. 17, Slippies, Everywhere, Everything and Nothing at All, and 16, Memba's Phase 4. So let's get into the actual top 15 now. Number 15, Cloud Nun's Last Train Home. Uh, this is a lot, or really more of the same with Cloud Nun, but it's a good more of the same. I really enjoyed this one, and it's got some of my favorite Cloud Nun tunes on it as of recent. Uh, there isn't really anything that differentiates this from some of his other tracks, but I'm just a big fan of Cloud Nun and his production, and so that's why it's here at 15. Number 14 is Dion Timmer's Arcane. This thing is packed in terms of both unique musical elements and genres, as well as its runtime. It is so long. I mean, a lot of that is the kind of arcane mix at the end, but without that, there's seven songs, I believe, in this EP, so it is a longer EP, and uh, it's just great. I think he did a great area of hitting all the heavy sides of EDM and kind of hitting all the different microcosms of the genres or of the overarching genre, and uh, it was just a fantastic project that I think uh, really had a lot in it, and I... I I would have been happy if he added maybe one or two more songs and made it an album, but uh, it's an EP and here it is. Number 13 is Effin's 
Phases EP. This thing is short and sweet and has a little bit of something for everyone. It's only three tracks long and kind of hits each of Effin's main kind of uh, production style in terms of what he likes to do, the kind of heavier stuff, the lighter, more nostalgic kind of uh, old school feel, and uh, the in-between, which I'm not really sure how to put it. But uh, I would go listen to Effin's, uh, this project, uh, Phases. I think it's a great introduction to him as an artist as well. Number 12 is Rome in Silver's Makeshift Moon. I've always loved the creativity of Rome and Silver to create these kind of crazy, funky, how tracks are house for the most part, or electro house. They kind of do a little bit of everything future based too. It just like, it's a thing that you really can't nail down a genre on, which I'm not like a, I'm not like everything needs to be genreized or categorized in genres. And so Roman Silver is one of the people that's for sure. You cannot put a genre on this. It is so like almost out of this world, almost like, almost like it's in a space or like a moon. But uh, this project is super fun and definitely a great listen. It's only five tracks long, which is I think actually just the average for EPs, but uh, this is a fun one for sure. Number 11 is Drinks on Me, Rise and fall a super great fantastic exploration into the sound of UK Garage. I have been a huge fan of Drinks On Me since uh, More To Give came out, the first single of this EP, uh, and I think it's just great. I'll, although I didn't love everything on this, I didn't really like High Caliber a lot or really at all, and Wapit I thought was okay. Uh, tracks like Falling Down and um, More To Give were, hoo, 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 they were just fantastic. They're right up my alley in terms of UK Garage sound, and uh, this whole thing is a banger. Number 10, hit the top 10, is Boombox Cartel's Cartel 2. This project is insane. It's seven tracks, 25 minutes long, and it is pure trap bliss. I love Boombox Cartel for their ability to create this kind of niche trap sound. It's very not uh, commercial or like the basic trap rap kind of beats. They do their own sort of stuff that's that's really heavy and gritty and has a darker take on it. Even the album art has this kind of like darker, like ghostly sense to it. And uh, and it uh, they really back it up with the production design and the sound design of the uh, EP. Number nine is Bad Computers Somewhere New EP. Some of you are gonna be upset that it is not higher than this, uh, but that's where it's going to be for me. I'm a huge fan of Bad Computer, and uh, this EP is, is just fantastic. His Electro House sounds are incredible. There's really not a ton like it. It's uh, kind of glitchy while still maintaining like this smooth, crisp sound to it while just being so chaotic. And uh, what he does feels like magic half the time. And uh, I, I'm a big fan, even though it's not my favorite individual songs of his that he's put together. Uh, it's still a fantastic EP. At number eight is Memba's phase one. I'll take a quick second, you'll know why later, to explain this phase project. So Memba did four phase EPs that were just quick three song EPs that had, uh, they had collaborations in them on every single song. So there was a, in the end, 12 songs, phase one, two, three, four, they each had their own kind of style to it. And uh, phase one was pretty much an introduction to this whole idea of this collaboration project. Uh, and it kind of had their classic, sound to it. I really don't know how to describe the Memba sound. Um, it's, you just got to go listen to it. Uh, the thing is, it's, it's great. It, it ha really has some great songs on it. At number seven is Memba again with Sun Sailor, not even the Phase Projects. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Memba just kind of proves themselves to be just a pioneer of the creativity within the EDM genre. This one has a little bit more of a tribal influence to the whole thing. Uh, the tracks are a little bit longer than they normally are and not as commercially friendly, which is something I've quite enjoyed, which is why I have it just above phase one. And this one was more of their own stuff. There wasn't as many collaborations on this project as there was on the phase stuff. And so uh, this one came out early, early 2021, and I've loved it ever since. At number six is Cascade's Reset EP. This EP just reminds me why Cascade is such a household name in the genre of house. It's a four track, primarily progressive house EP that uh, I've I've just really stuck onto. Um, two of the tracks, Flip Reset and Miles To Go are personal favorites of mine for the year. And um, I mean, Flip Reset was earlier, but that's besides the point. Uh, I really, really love this project. And uh, Cascade was one of the people that first introduced me to EDM back in whenever it was. And so I've always had a soft spot for him and his music. Number five is K Flay's Inside Voices. Uh, this was actually an interesting one because uh, I knew of K Flay before, but really only as features for other EDM songs. I never really gave her a shot individually, but I went and listened to this EP first, Inside Voices and then Outside Voices, which was earlier on the list. 
And dang, I really like it. It's like this kind of pop rock style that is, isn't is really EDM at all. I don't know why she does music stuff with EDM or gives vocal features to EDM people in the past, but uh, it is a ton of fun. I love her kind of just like uh, in your face, no nonsense attitude and her like half screaming vocals half the time are actually really enjoyable for me. And uh, I've, I think I've become a K-Flay stan ever since. Number four is Memba's Phase 3 EP. You're going to hear this phase a couple more times, maybe one more time. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, this one has a distinctly more Arabic sound design to it and is a lot more of a kind of basic kind of festival or hybrid trap sound. Uh, it's the most trappy unlike anything else. Um, the other phase projects are a little more future basey here and there, have some electro, but uh, this one is pretty much a pure like Arabic trap thing. And uh, it's fun. It, it has some like really mindless bangers in it. Um, sometimes like what 654 is kind of dumb in the lyrics that they say and stuff, but uh, it's just a nice like mindless banger EP to put on. Number three is the quadruple collaboration that is Hex Cougar, Pauline Her, Sosas, and Seijo with Genesis. Uh, it's a mouthful just to say. Uh, the whole EP is masterfully put together. The sound design and atmosphere of it is just incredible. Uh, even matches up with the artwork and the individual single artwork for each of the tracks. It just has this uh, sense of feeling of, of just these grander thematics to it. It has more of a, a, a trap future-based kind of feel to it, just like the kind of Memba stuff does. But my gosh, this thing is is just incredible. Uh, it just sounds that I've never really heard before. They're, they're this like darker trap feel that's not quite like your basic kind of sad boy trap. It's like a it's like a darker, grittier trap that I don't hear very often. And I think, I mean, obviously Hex Cougar pioneered a lot of this, but uh, it, it, is, it, is, it is great. You should definitely listen to it and definitely underrated. And number two is Memba's Phase Two, the strongest of the four phase projects. This one, all three songs were absolutely incredible. It always ends where it begins. Um, Alberta and uh, Opposites Attract. Those three songs were probably would have made my top 50 list if, uh, well, some of them did make my top 50 list. Go back and watch that. Haha, <laughs> clever plug. Uh, but yeah, Memba just, I think, really peaked with the phase two here. Um, phase one was good and then it got incredible with phase two uh, and then it got like a little worse with phase three but still good and then phase four I think was the worst of all of them. Uh, but this one, it's just great. It's just got more of a, a nature-esque vibe to this one. So phase three was more Arabic. Phase four I think is a little more uh, watery. I don't know really how to describe phase one. Uh, but phase two has, uh, it's it feels like you're more in nature and it's got more uh, sound design and foley to it that kind of puts you in a place and time in each of the tracks. And uh, it's just so fun. I love this so much. And the number one EP of 2021 is Dumu's After You. The swan song of Dumu after Charlie has indefinitely suspended uh, his him making music under this Dumu alias. Uh, Dumu really went out with a bang. I'm sad that this is as uh, underrated as an album. I wouldn't even say underrated. It's just it doesn't have as much uh, commercial success as I would have loved it to. Uh, even fans of Dumu I know haven't even listened to this album, which is or this EP, which is crazy. I, they can't really be a fan of Dumu in that sense, but uh, it's just great. I think um, it's not as uh, punchy and as uh, like bubbly as some of his other future-based stuff on Monster Cat. It has more of an emotional pull and um, uh, tug in the heartstrings a little bit more and has more of that grandiose feel that I love where it kind of starts calm and then gets massive and then kind of ends as a slow denouement again. And so, whoo, Dumu absolutely knocked out of park and it is my number one album of 2021. But that is it for the list. Let me know what you guys think of my top 15, technically 74 EPs of 2021. If there was anything that you're like, wow, it's not on the list, it's because I didn't listen to it. I couldn't listen to everything in a year and this is what I came with. And so let me know what you guys think uh, of my list and I'd love to know what your top EPs of the years are. I would love to hear them in the comment section below. Without any further ado, I've been Bowtie Media and I'll see you guys in another video.